This is Twit. During my post-incident survey of security professionals, three cloud-based password managers kept being mentioned over and over. They were Dashlane, One Password, and Bitwarden. We all know that Bitwarden is an active sponsor of the Twit Network and a frequent advertiser on this podcast. So I was glad to see other knowledgeable researchers praising it. Here's what Jeremy Gosney wrote once he had calmed down a bit from <laughs> his being jilted from his being jilted by LastPass. I think that's what happened. He, he was upset. He, yeah. 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 Clearly. He said, "So, why do I recommend Bitwarden and 1Password?" It's quite simple, he says. I personally know the people who architect 1Password. And I can attest that not only are they extremely competent and very talented, but they also actively engage with the password cracking community and have a deep, deep, he says again with asterisks, desire to do everything in the most correct manner possible. Do they still get some things wrong? Sure. But they strive for continuous improvement and sincerely care about security. Also, their secret key feature ensures that if anyone does obtain a copy of your vault, they simply cannot access it with the master password alone, making it uncrackable. Next, he says, Bitwarden is 100% open source. I have not done a thorough code review, but I have taken a fairly long glance at the code and I am mostly pleased with what I've seen. I'm less thrilled about it being written in a garbage collected language, garbage collected language, and there are some trade offs that are made there. It's C sharp and, and .NET. So, right. Yeah. But overall, Bitwarden, and all you have to do is wipe any plain text. You know, I, I did that in Squirrel. As yeah. like, you know, yeah. before you release memory, you, you zero out the, the, the plain text and then you're fine. Anyway, he says, but overall, Bitwarden is a solid product. I prefer Bitwarden's user experience, and I've considered crowdfunding a formal audit of Bitwarden, much in the way the Open Crypto Audit Project raised the funds to properly audit TrueCrypt. The community would greatly benefit from this. Okay, now, I know from my Twitter feed that many of my Twitter followers, or at least those who are tweeting to at SGGRC, are using 1Password. I've not looked closely at it, but from what Jeremy says, that would appear to be a solid choice. Another password cracking enthusiast by the name of Steve Thomas ranks Dashlane first, Bitwarden second, and 1Password third. But only because Dashlane is using his favorite pet password key derivation function known as Argon2. Argon2 is a memory hard function designed in 2015, which is highly resistant to GPU attacks. It won the but it's, hashing challenge yes. as being the most uh, secure. Yeah. But its implementations it's need slow. to be careful <laughs> about yeah. side channel leaks oh, interesting. since the, the original design accesses memory in a password dependent sequence. Thus, from you know, oh. you're able to defer yeah. something about Ooh. the password yeah. from 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 memory access patterns. As a consequence, improvements have been made in Argon 2 since then. But a password manager's choice of its key derivation function is incidental at most, and the strength of any good function can simply be turned up as needed over time. So it appears that all three of these are in the running. Next. I went to check out the personal plans these three offered. Blessedly, I don't need a family plan or a business plan or anything other than a just please keep all of my passwords safe, secure, and synchronized among all of my devices plan. Although the value of a password manager is now well proven, so that asking for some money should not be a problem, I like the idea of being able to turn people onto it so that they can take it out for a spin without needing to pay in advance for a year's commitment. In other words, a useful free tier, such as LastPass once had, but then abandoned. You know, that was part of my criteria in the beginning mm -hmm. for LastPass. Yeah, that was the beginning and that of the end right there. I that think. went away too. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's part of my criteria for the perfect password manager. Unfortunately, Dashlane's free plan 
only now allows for the use of a single device. So you can't use it on both your desktop and even one mobile platform? Mm. That's crazy. No. Why allow any devices if you can't use at least two? So you need to pay at their minimum plan of $33 per year in advance, which does then provide for an unlimited number of devices. One password doesn't even try to offer a free tier. If you want to use one password, you pay $36 in advance for a year to use it. Bitwarden of the three is the only one to offer an actually useful free plan which allows for the use of any number of devices. And Leo, as you often note, when you're talking about Bitwarden, since their free plan actually really does everything you'll probably need, their $10 per year paid plan at less than a third the price of the others is mostly just there to support them. Although you do get two-factor authentication for for that $10 per year. Oh, that's worth and it. I would, yeah. Yes, and I would argue that for 10 bucks, come on. Yeah. You know, you, you, you should see what my latte costs now. <laughs> Incidentally, Whoa. I did ask when they started advertising, I said, uh, because we'd been burned by LastPass, frankly, I said, uh, tell me about the free plan. Uh, is, they said, look, we're open source. It's always going to be free because otherwise people just fork it. It's free, free. We have no, that's not part of our business models to make money on the free uh, plans. So uh, that's reassuring. They're not going to do the pull of LastPass and say, oh yeah, now you have to pay for it. Uh, open yep. source has a lot of benefits in this area, I think. Well, you know? and as Jeremy noted, the icing on the cake is that Bitwarden is also 100% open source. Yeah. I saw a tweet pass by some time ago that our old friend Alex Niehaus was moving his family to Bitwarden and choosing to self-host a Bitwarden server That's in his own option. cloud. Yeah. Yep. And actually, after this happened, I kind of, because for a long time I said, well, I'm never going to be able to protect it as well as professionals at, let's say, LastPass, whoops, or Bitwarden or 1Password or Dashlane will. But then there, there's the counter argument, which is it's a single point of attack. That's where all the vaults are. So if you yep. self-host, I put it on Dropbox, it's encrypted, they'd have to target me or stumble upon it somehow. And even then, they'd only get the encrypted blob that we've talked about that is well encrypted. Yep. So I'm thinking about making mine self-hosted now. Um, well, you know, those are the sorts of things that, uh, that, you know, that the use of a truly open password manager can, can provide. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, and while it's not of interest to everyone, I imagine that it's the sort of thing that would appeal to this podcast audience. On December 7th, Bitwarden posted a blog titled new deployment option for self-hosting Bitwarden. I've got a link to that. Uh, in the show notes, bottom of page 10 of the show notes for anyone who's who's interested in taking the path that Alex took. Uh, and so, you know, that's something that is uh, that can be done. And in my digging around over the holidays, I stumbled upon a Bitwarden page which linked to their past annual third party outside network security and application security penetration testing audits. So they're auditing themselves, having themselves audited by a number of different outside firms every year. I, I ended up not being able to find that same page later, but I found another that provides the same info, and it's under bitwardens.com slash help slash is hyphen bitwarden hyphen audited. And so there are links uh, there to everything. And I also noted at the bottom of that page that they're signed up with HackerOne to offer and manage bug bounties against their platform. So the reason I originally chose LastPass and was comfortable endorsing it was that its author opened up its internals to me so that I could understand exactly how it worked. And it was solely on that basis and for that reason that I chose it. I don't regret the decision I made back then. LastPass has been a flawless companion for me over the years. I say that knocking on wood somewhere because, you know, my vault has now been absconded with. But as we've observed earlier on this podcast, the world has been changing ever since. And LastPass no longer fits the way it once did. And, you know, it and its organization 
is beginning to act and feel a bit too old and creaky, which is not what anyone wants in their password manager. An example of a different, more aware and contemporary approach is Bitwarden's description of their management of their user's master password. Bitwarden wrote, SHA-256 is used to derive the encryption key from your master password. Bitwarden salts and hashes your master password with your email address locally before transmission to our servers. Once a Bitwarden server receives the hashed password, it is salted again with a cryptographically secure random value, hashed again, and stored in our database. The default iteration count used with PBKDF2 is 100,001 iterations on the client. Client-side iteration count is configurable from your account settings. And then an additional 100,000 iterations when stored on our servers for a total of 201,000 iterations yeah. by default. Okay, can I interrupt with a stupid question? What's with the 100,001 or the 100,100? Uh, uh, they don't like round numbers? That, that they is want them round -ish? A, that is a great question. I, I okay. okay, there's nothing. There's no technical. It's no. just a random. It's not, like it's, it's not like it's a power of two or something right. where no. it's going to, you know, be yeah. some magic. It's, it's I bizarre. Think it's prime. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that wouldn't matter either. Anyway, no, that, so 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 Bitwarden is not so is not only hashing a hundred thousand times on our system, and you can turn that to anything you want. And by the way, I would go with like three hundred fifty thousand. That's that, turn that's it up. pretty much yeah. I'm yeah turn that's mine pretty up. much where you, where you want to be at this point. Okay. And then they're getting it, resalting it, and then running it another hundred thousand times on their you know high speed machine because they can just you know because. So, anyway, uh, everybody knows what happened then. I went to bitwarden.com slash twit. Thank slash you. twit. By the way, this and is I not signed, a paid ad in any respect. This no. Is, I, I, this is I, Everybody right. who's listening to this knows that, yeah. you know, I chose them because they're open source. They have a useful free tier, and they're as good as anybody else. Yeah. Are you going to self-host? You're certainly capable of doing that. Um, it looks like you actually have to run a Bitwarden server. You can't just oh, have a Bitwarden file. There is a third-party server that is widely agreed to be much faster. I think it's written in Go. So you could use, you don't have to use, it's open source. Somebody else has written a server that's better than Bitwarden's. Nice. And most of the people who self-host that I know uh, use that software. I'll find it for you. But, you know, I don't self-host. I'm not going to bother. No, no. I mean, I mean, again, the reason we did this in the beginning was that we had really strong local client side encryption and we were just using the the, 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 the provider to hold onto our data for right. us. Unfortunately, right. LastPass has just demonstrated Whew. that we can no longer trust them to do that. It's it's literally the worst thing that could happen to a pass. Well, Except for not encrypting it right, but but well, assuming I mean, the encryption is like, you know, good, it's as bad as you yes. get. Well, the, the the reason we were all using the cloud is if your local encryption is solid, it doesn't matter right. if they lose control. Right. Unfortunately, they both lost control, <laughs> and their local encryption <laughs> was, was not being kept was not being kept up to date. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, so I signed up for Bitwarden, started the ten dollar plan. Then I went to a menu item I had never used in my last pass vault, export. <gasps> and I exported a 77K byte CVS file. I opened my shiny new Bitwarden web interface and under tools at the top was a menu item, import data. From a drop down menu there, I selected the import source as being LastPass CSV, provided the file name of the of the file I'd exported from LastPass, and watched a perfect error free transfer of my entire legacy LastPass data into Bitwarden. My password database, auto filled credit cards, and all my secure notes made the move without incident or complaint. I so, have done this as well several years ago, but I did it. Uh, the only thing I would say 
uh, is immediately securely erase the CSV file because it's in plain text, right? <laughs> no, no, no. It's the, not? the CSV, no, it is an encrypted it's vault. It's still encrypted. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but wait, it's no, no, it, it is. It, it has to be in plain text. It has to be in plain text. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, so in order to import it, Treat of that carefully. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I was briefly confused with the XML that we grabbed That's from different. LastPass. Yeah, yeah, server. no, but this they yeah, have yeah. to unencrypt it so it can be re-encrypted. Yeah, and in fact, I remember, being very, I remember being very nervous about the fact that that file was yes. on my system. I was yes. like, <laughs> yeah, delete it securely. The other thing. Uh, when I did the import, I had some very long and weird notes in LastPass, and a few of the very long note fields uh, got munged on the import, or maybe on the export. I'm not sure at what end, but uh, you might check if you use secure notes to make sure everything got in. Uh, I remember that I had some trouble with that. In fact, actually, I think the import didn't work because Bitwarden said, well, I don't know. This is too long. I can't, <laughs> yeah, I can't import see, that. And, and, and I was wary of that, but I had no complaints no or, okay. or issues at all. Uh, uh, Simon Zarafa, who is a frequent uh, contributor to the podcast, he said that that the Android client I put him off a little bit. Do you? But you certainly are an Android Oh, user. no, no. It's fine. Okay. Um, look, I mean, I guess we should also say, and and we talked about Tavis Ormandy saying this, that the JavaScript stuff, like the plugins for the browsers, perhaps the, the mobile clients, for all these password managers, these are a little bit potentially problematic, especially if uh, code got injected. Malicious code got injected and so forth, right? Well, again, there is no guarantee being made for any of this right. over on the client side. Right. That isn't something we have any control over. If something evil gets in your machine, you know, it can be logging your keystrokes. It That's can be a good watching point. you, you yeah. type your master all, password All bets in. are off. Uh, some yeah. might say, uh, Tavis did, that it's better to use the binary as opposed to the JavaScript plugin on the browser. And LastPass, Bitwarden, Dashlane. And uh, and uh, one password all offer a standalone app. I think in some cases it's Electron, so maybe that's not great. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I would say is, if you are in the minority and you only use Apple products, you Apple has a very good, I think, password manager that will do all the things a password manager will do, and it's all kept within the Apple ecosystem. It's it's a little hard. You can use it on Windows and Android, but you have to have a, an Apple app to do that. Um, probably should be added to the list of potential candidates for people who are mostly Apple focused. I was going to say yes. If, if you were a Mac user, then it would make certainly sense to, to stay there. And of yeah. course, I'm not. I just I'm an iOS. I use them. It's only. nice. It has a very nice generator. It fills it in, and it's, but uh, I I still I need Bitwarden because I use Linux. You know, I use other stuff. And uh, and Bit I need a cross-platform one. And I, you know, as much as I love Bitwarden and they are a, a sponsor and it's what I use personally, um, I think you'd be fine with Dashlane or 1Password as well. I see no reason not, uh, to, not uh, to use those. Yes, as I, as I said at the beginning or uh, when we were talking about this, I see lots of tweets from our listeners who are 1Password users. Very and, happy. Yeah. You know, e even Jeremy, when he's not, you know... <laughs> <laughs> frothing uh, uh, thinks that one password is a good thing too. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Globally respected companies and agencies turn to ACI Learning year after year to help them maintain their competitive edge, supporting organizations across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness. ACI Learning keeps organizations at the top of their game. Visit acilearning.com and let ACI level up your IT team.